All right, guys, we are in the car and we are heading to pick up the turtle. Now he's at uh, some guy's house. He uh, contacted me and he's got the, the turtle in a tank that apparently he rescued from a pet store. And uh, I'm not too sure where the turtle came from, but I do know that it is an endangered species. So I can't wait to show you guys what we got in store and uh, what we're going to be doing to help rescue the, this turtle. I think this is going to be a pretty awesome story. All right, guys, so we got the turtle. Now, some of you guys might know what this is. Most of you probably will not know, but this is the turtle right here. They call this a Blanding's turtle. Now, he is native to the United States here, but he is an endangered species, and uh, they, they can reproduce up until about 80 to 90 years old that's why they want to do a lot of research on, on these guys but we got the call from what one of my uh, uh, followers of the the rescue and he wanted us to come hey, pick him up I knew exactly what the turtle was so I knew exactly what I should be doing with, with this guy now you're not supposed to own them because they are illegal so we called our friends over at the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center. This is where I, you know, take a lot of the snapper turtles and they have a conservation project for this little turtle guy right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him the life that he deserves. He's gonna live with other Blanding's turtles and uh, they can go ahead and get his shell all fixed up because as you can see, he wasn't taken the greatest care of, but as, as of now, he's going to be living the best life that he can possibly live. So, let's go ahead and take this guy in. So, when I called uh, our friends over here at the Wildlife and Nature Center, the first thing they wanted to know was where the turtle come from and if it had been microchipped. I told them I did not know, but I'm just trying to get the turtle to better care. So, we're going to go find out and see if this turtle is microchipped at all, if it's been tagged or anything like that. But also, while I was on the phone with them, they want to take certain indigenous species as far as fish from us. So, we might even get to check out some of their aquatics department while we're here. So, here we're inside the nature center. And this is their population of bees. They give a little facts about each and every animal that they have here. We have a big old colony out here in this outdoor exhibit. Kind of neat. But let's go find the aquatic species. Oh, here's actually a beehive. They're all honey bees, and oh, that's a lot of them. Look at all that honey. Oh my gosh. They're probably so mad in there. Probably. But they probably get transferred in and outside all the time. I doubt they just live in here forever. <laughs> all right, let's go see what else they got. Well, here's what we've been looking for. <laughs> so over here, they got a little tide pool habitat. This is all salt water. Looks like they've got damsels and clownfish and all sorts of little, little neat things. This is pretty cool. <laughs> so you guys can see a little chocolate chip starfish in there. Everywhere you look, you'll find something a little new. <laughs> see, they have their goldfish koi and carp. And of course, they've got the Long nose gar, native to the Lake Erie. Got little hissing cockroaches down here. Not my cup of tea, but. <laughs> here we go, we got some lizards. This is a Sudan plated lizard. Over here, we've got little skunks. I'd imagine they're descented, of course. They got a pretty nice little thing over here, a little enclosure. 
these guys do make great pets. We usually get them before their eyes open. You can bottle feed them and have them descented. They're actually better than your cats would be because they actually imprint on you and think that you're mom. And actually, it's pretty cute. And over here, of course, we've got the iguana. Looks a little skinny, but I take it he's a re rescue. You can see there's something wrong with his lower jaw there. Doesn't look a little normal, but probably getting the care that he needs. Over here we've got native sunfish and crappie, of course. <laughs> Over here we've got some more lake inhabitants. We've got smallmouth bass. Uh, we've got bullhead catfish. I get these guys in at the rescue all, all the time. But pretty cool to see them on display and appreciate it around here. There's a little peek see at what's in these tanks over here, of course. The ye yellow perch are, are gone, of course. They're not in, in here no more. That's actually one, one of the species that they said I get at the rescue they want to put on display here. Over here, oh, these guys are pretty neat if there's something in here. They're called hellbenders. Oh, there he is. These guys are like a big salamander. They get pretty big. He's probably about 15 inches long or so. But they are native to around here. Most people don't know that, and they find them out in the wild, and they're like, what is this thing? But they are Eastern Hellbenders. I've personally ne never had one, but nonetheless, something cool. Over here, we've got bullfrogs, and uh, what is this, a painted turtle? And then over here, we've got some softshell turtles. Hopefully this might be somewhere that the Blanders comes, but most likely he'll be uh, in back somewhere. <laughs> and over here you've got a little bit more of the stream habitats. You've got darters, shiners, and hog suckers. I don't no normally deal with these guys too often either, but let's see what else they got. Of course they have their outdoor exhibits too. Over here we've got some turkeys. Probably not out. Nope, they're inside then. Oh, nope, there's actually a turkey right back there. Now if you guys can see it, he kind of gonna blends in back there. But there's a turkey. Thanksgiving's coming up. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee, how could you say that? Thanksgiving's one of the best holidays. <laughs> well, so uh, we're go going to cut to uh, our little snippet of taking the turtle in, in back. We're going to go on this little nature hike, but um, we did take the turtle in back, and they're going to put it through a med medical examiner and then have uh, one of their people from the metro parks come in and see if the it's been tagged or not and then they're gonna they also work with uh herps alive to be able to either rehome this turtle or find a facility for it to live in if it happens to be a wild species so we, we will find out about that here in a little bit it have to be um chips and then it goes into a database because they're a native turtle. So like, <clears throat> if you wanted to breed spotted turtles or blandings, you could get a permit for it and breed them, but you have to have them chipped. And so that chip is used and it goes into a database. And so that if one's found, you can go back to that chip number in the database, find who owned the turtle <clears throat> or who did research. Cause there are also research being done on their movements and where they're going, um, how far they, um, the travel, how long they live, things like that. Mm -hmm. So researchers, like with the Cleveland Metro Parks and other places, will um, pit tag them, and then that way, when they relocate them, they can scan it and see if it's um, if it's one of their turtles in the study or not. Um, and so it's always good to scan them to see. And if not, then we'll go from there. But if it is scanned, we can kind of <clears throat> track down because we had a blanding that was found earlier this year. It was a small male. Um, it was found in Medina, like them in the Medina Square, which is not really a place you would typically find a blanding turtle. So I went through all this stuff to try to figure out it was chipped. It turned out it was owned by a person that bought them from another state. 
and he had a little uh, pond set up. It was actually a really cool setup. He was going to breed them, and the um, hot wire, the, he had a hot wire so it would stop like, other predators from getting in there, was turned off, and so a couple of them climbed over and out, got out, and that's how we were able to relocate the turtles to get, get it back to the, the owner. Um, so this could be a wild one, or it could be so, you know, one that somebody had um, as a pet legally. Um, it's hard to say, so I won't know until we check to see if it's got a chip. So more than likely, do you think this guy would be likely try to be released back into the wild? or? Uh, so since we don't know where it came from, it can't be released in the wild, okay. unless it's got a chip, because then we know it came from a certain spot. But um, it's very, very important that you don't... Uh, transport or move reptiles and amphibians because of the diseases and things that they can transfer from one population to another. Mm -hmm. They may have something that's benign to that population where they came from and they're leaving, living with it fine, but if you transfer them, move them somewhere else, they could transfer that to a new population and it can cause all kinds of issues. So, plus they have very, very uh, strict and um, dedicated home ranges. So a turtle like this age might move for mile, hundreds of miles in between its territory over its lifetime. But when you um, move it, it gets lost because there's no idea where it's at, and they just wander and wander and wander. They can, you know, get uh, that can just kill them from just not knowing where they're at and stuff. So gotcha. they have to go back where they came from. So since we don't know where it came from, we'll have to find out if it's chipped first, and if not, then we'll go to uh, um, you know a place that's a permitted facility to keep them that has the right exhibit. So awesome. Yeah. Well, this place isn't uh, too big, but it. It gets the job done. We can take a lot, lot of our turtles that we're not supposed to have. Like I usually bring all the snapper turtles here, alligator snappers, stuff like that. More of the indigenous species to around here, and they give them the care that they that they need. But I was just inside talking to one, one of the curators of uh, the wildlife department here, and he wants a bow fin, and I get them periodically at the, the rescue most people come in and think that it's a snakehead but it's not they are native here to Ohio but uh next bowfin I get in they're gonna come back here and go on display at the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center so we're getting right ready to head, head back home so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vi video hope you guys uh, liked our little in adventure and saving this endangered species it's something cool and something you don't normally do it every day so hope, hope you guys liked it and always remember like comment subscribe and uh, i can't re really say stay fishy on the, this one but i couldn't leave it out out of the video <laughs> have a nice day